you're always going to be better, but massively improved to 50 odd percent. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be a, a diabolical record for New Zealand and England and Ireland, the Scotland. You know, then there are numerous teams that did far, far better than 50 odd percent. And and as I said, playing those really weakened yeah. sides as well. So you know, I th- he simply has to go. I mean, there's just no question about it. I think it's just a matter of time until we get to this 13th of December where SA Rugby have their yeah. annual general council, and then it's just a matter of how many days after that they actually give him the boot. And you know he's he's been there for two years. I don't think he he probably was the right person two years ago to appoint. But when you look at his record, you know he took the Stormers to a level, but could, couldn't quite win anything. Then he went off to Japan, and I'm not sure he wasn't there long enough to see what he would have done mm-hmm. there. But he he has a ceiling, as a lot of players do. His ceiling is sort of Super Rugby, in my opinion, as a Super Rugby coach. Some yeah. players have a ceiling of they they're good at Super Rugby. A lot of the Lions players, I think, we were falsely believed were world beaters because they were our best side and, and they competed well in two consecutive Super Rugby but that the step up to international yeah. is just totally different it takes a different mindset often players play better in the green and gold than they do for their their, their provincial sides so I think he's sort of out of his depth you know we certainly need a coach with more experience worldwide he's, he's traveled he's like a Rasmus Erasmus is director of rugby you know he's at least been to Munster he's seen how the Europeans mm-hmm. do things you know I think he'll certainly be an improvement so uh, it's been a it's been a bit of a disaster two years. Even though the second year was a little bit better, it wasn't much better. It must be said. You know, I mean, I looked at some frightening stat. Steve Hansen, the New Zealand coach, has been in charge, I think, for 82 tests, and he's lost six. Alistair Castillo lost eight last year alone. <laughs> I mean, that that is quite frightening. So yeah. you know, I mean, it's it's really he's he, we tried him. It didn't. It's an experiment that didn't work. He simply has to go now. He has to go now. So the new coach has got two years until the next Rugby World Cup. It's pointless getting yeah. sticking through another year of of, of Alistair and then in a Rugby World Cup year trying to find a new coach. Mm. So yeah, that's sort of my <laughs> summary of the situation of South African rugby. Well, Rob, um, about the potential replacement, um, and we'll you know wrap, wrap it up with that. Uh, there's been uh, a lot of names uh, thrown about. Dion Davids, P- Peter de Villiers potentially making a comeback. Is this all just sort of scandalous rumor? What what kind of insight or in, uh, inside info can you give us? Well, look, uh, it it certainly. Uh, it, Obviously, there's going to be ma- massive speculation when someone like Russi mm. Erasmus comes on we, uh, comes on board. Uh, we know that he's he's a, a relatively secretive sort of fellow, so you know the, the rumor mill is going to to blossom when when a guy mm. like Russi comes along. Uh, he, he's he's relatively media shy, which of course is something that could create a little bit of an issue down the mm. line. Um, Nick Mallett pointed it out after the. Uh, the, the game on Saturday that um, you know somebody has to actually be prepared to to sort of take public responsibility yeah. for you know when things are going well <coughs> just as much as when things are going badly um, and of course the, the talk is that there will be a head coach who, who comes yeah. in below Russi but will have his will have significantly clipped wings uh, from mm. say Alistair he won't have the the sort of the um, the broader power that that Alistair had as as the clear cut head coach standalone guy yeah. um, so he'll have sort of a, a panel of lieutenants below him. Whether we'll actually have a specific head coach mantle is an interesting one. I don't know, maybe they'll call him a sort of senior assistant coach or something, mm-hmm. and that Rossi Erasmus will effectively be the director of rugby um, and and the head coach, you know, mm-hmm. wearing sort of both hats, but also perhaps still being able to sidestep a little bit of the public uh, sort of face of things. Um, so, uh, you know, it's difficult to, uh, lots of names have been tossed around. We know that, that uh, most of the guys who've been under the Alistair uh, regime uh, are on a walking a, a real tightrope, or are sort of uh, drifting away anyway. Um, I, I hardly see how you know mm. Franco Smith is going to be able to to keep a, a role there uh, with the, with the backs. Um, Matt Proudfoot, maybe you could argue, is someone who might be worth persevering with. But there's also rumours that you know they might get a, a scrumming guru like uh, Peter de Villiers, the the former um, French international, mm. South African born, obviously, who who might come on board and, and provide some uh, some technical acumen. But uh, you know, scrumming, for instance, is an area where we we don't have any special problems. We've got mm. lots of good resources, uh, props, locks, um, mm. a good tight five, uh, lots of grunt in the engine room. Um, so uh, what we really are looking for desperately is for someone to come in and take mm. charge of the back line. I think Russi is capable of, of uh, you know, working in both fields quite uh, quite smartly. Uh, he was a real flair loose forward. He was a guy who had a, a step, a little mm. bit of magic to him uh, when he played his rugby. And so he appreciates attacking play um, in a general sense. And I think he could have quite an impact himself on the back line. But it will be crucial who he gets underneath him. Mm. Uh, talk of people like Dion Davids coming on board from the Kings. Again, you know, uh, some reservations about that because he's been with a really struggling Kings side yeah. um, through no fault of his own, really. But, um, you know, coaching a team 
in the sort of bottom echelons of, of super rugby or domestic rugby yeah, uh, is a big, up. big step uh, up to yeah. international mm -hmm. rugby. Um, so still lots of question marks, but uh, a lot of weight on the shoulders of, uh, on the relatively young still, shoulders of, of, of Rassi Erasmus, uh, mm -hmm. clearly. And uh, unlikely to get someone from abroad. It seems so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't think anybody, uh, one of the senior coaches from abroad, would be prepared to necessarily step into a mantle where, where, where Rassi, uh, I think, is going to quite clearly call the shots mm -hmm. and then almost be like a sort of a you know a sub lieutenant. Um, I think some of the better mm -hmm. overseas-based coaches would rather stay, uh, avoid the sort of South African politics and shenanigans, uh, to be frank, um, and not not want to come mm -hmm. aboard. Um, and of course, be earning significantly weaker weaker currency as well, even if they did give him a, a reasonably decent package. Right, James, thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick.